Welcome to Symphony Workshop, I'm Gary Clark and this is part 6, the final part in a multi-part tutorial in which I'm consuming a third party API using Symphony HTTP client and driving out functionality using test driven development. In this final part we're going to add functionality for updating an existing record in the database and I'll also talk you through some handling of errors when you don't know what kind of errors you're going to get back from the API. Some information first, I record in high resolution so there's no need for you to watch on a blurry screen. Choose high definition if that will work for you. Would you like to join a growing group of PHP developers and take your skills to a new level? If that sounds like you, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon and welcome. Let's start off by addressing this situation here. Every time I run the command it's creating duplicates. I don't want duplicates, what I want to do is update existing records in the database if they exist. So I'm going to rename this test here to create new records correctly and I'll create a new test and I'm going to call it the refresh stock profile command updates existing records correctly. I'll add my test annotation to that and I'm going to borrow the setup from another test. Now it looks like I'm duplicating every time I run a test but it's not part of my application code or I don't consider my test to be part of application code. Tests are tests and application code is application code. The reason why I like to keep it all in each individual test is I like to read each one like a story and see exactly what steps I've taken to set up etc. I don't want to have to go looking for that in the rest of my code. Now what I'm doing here is creating an existing stock which will exist in the database before the command is run and so when the command executes I need to test that I'm not creating a new stock but that this one is getting updated. So I'm grab, going to grab the stock ID as I'm going to need that to peek into the database to look for existing records. Now these string records that you see at the top I expect those to say the same but these numeric values are the ones which I expect to change. For setting the content I'd like to do something like this. The string has served as well so far but I'd like something a bit more dynamic, a bit more parameterized, where I can pass in an array of values and internally it will be converted to a JSON string. So what I'm doing here is just passing in the values that my fake Yahoo Finance API is going to return. So I'll borrow, I'll copy these from a previous test that copies them all to the clipboard and if you're using PHP Storm like me, if you do Shift Command V, that'll bring up a little um, menu of recently copied items and you can just paste them in. So again, Shift Command V, find the one I want, paste. If you're on Windows or Linux, it'll be Shift Control V, but I'm sure you knew that already, didn't you? So paste in our last one here and just tidy this up. So this looks pretty good. All we need to do now is go over to the fake Yahoo Finance API client. Here's another one for you. Pub SF tab will stub out a public static function skeleton for you. So I just need to add the name. And so this is going to take an array of overrides. And within the method there will be a existing array of defaults. Which I shall merge the overrides into the existing. So self content equals array merge. The first array will be my existing ones and then the overrides will be merged in with the existing array and the overrides will take precedence if there are duplicate keys. And as you saw there I'll just set the string values as the defaults which can be overridden. Now that we've set the content let's just dump it out and see what we're getting back just to check that this is working. So I'm going to grab the test name, go over to the test. And I do this kind of thing all the time while I'm working out a test, just keep dumping stuff out, going back to the terminal and seeing what kind of values that I'm getting. Okay, that looks good, but it's not right because it's an array and I'm expecting a string, but the values looked correct. So progress, we just need to encode this uh, array. So let's now go back to the terminal, run it again, and that is beautiful, exactly what we want. Bit of a sidetrack to create that there, but I think you'll agree that we've now got something which is much better for setting our fake Yahoo Finance API client content. Let's change the status code to 200 and then we need to do the do something part of our test. So I can go and borrow that from another test because it's the same for each one. We're just going to fire off the execute method on the command tester. 
and then I need to make some assertions. So what is it that I need to assert? Well, I want to check that the existing stock, the one that I created here, has been updated and that the values for previous close price and price change now all match those which I set with my fake Yahoo API client. I'll grab that stock using the stock repository and this is how I get that. This entity manager, get repository, pass in the name of the uh, entity and then to get the stock record it's just repo and then find and you can just pass in the ID and that's why I grabbed that ID there. I know that the ID will be unique for each record and so it will be a true test. And now I'm just going to make assertions. So I want to assert that the stock record now has these values. So this assert equals and I'll go and grab this previous close value here, paste that in there and then it's stock record get previous close. And I'll do the exact same thing for the other two, you don't need to watch me do them all. What we do need to do is check that we only have one record in the database. So again we can go and steal from our other tests. In fact we'll grab all these lines here and we'll check those extra bits as well. So we'll just tidy this up, remove that. The command status we actually expect it to be zero if it runs successfully. And so just to be clear what I'm looking for in my test is for the one record that we created to have been updated, these values should change to the ones we set with our fake and I still want to see only one record in the database. Let's run it and see how we get on. It's a failure but it's a good failure. It's basically saying it's found the record in the database but it hasn't been updated which is what we expect because we've not written the code to update it. So it's a failure but it's a good failure. In refresh stock profile command here are the steps we need to take in order to get us back to green. So we need to try and find the record in the database using the stock profile symbol and if we find it we'll update it, if not we'll create a new one. So I'm grabbing the symbol from the stock profile and do that by JSON decoding stock profile get content. Ideally on that content there should be a symbol key, if not we're just going to set symbol to null. Using that symbol I'm going to try and find a record in the database. So I can inline it all inside an if conditional if stock equals and on the stock repository I'm going to call the find one by method which takes an array and that will be symbol symbol. And like I say if one's found we're going to update it so we'll just move that comment up to there. Otherwise, we'll just create the new one and we've already got the code for that. We know how to create a stock using deserialization, but how do we actually update an existing stock using deserialization? Well, it's not too dissimilar. So what we're going to do is copy that from there. And then the deserialize method, it takes four arguments. We've only been using three. The fourth argument is a context array and in that we're going to use the abstract normalizer and set the object to populate constant to our stock. So the first three params as usual are data, type and format. Abstract normalizer can be found in Symfony, Component, Serializer, Normalizer, Abstract Normalizer. Let's go and roll the dice with our fingers crossed. Fail asserting that one matches zero on line 112 of our test which is the stock record count and we had that wrong so it should be one we had zero might be a good idea to put a comment in here to explain what's going on so we're checking that there's no duplicates i.e there should be one record instead of two back to the test run that again and we are agreeing with five assertions life is good let's take this for a test drive in dev mode so we'll delete this duplicate and we'll go over and actually run the command from the console. So symphony console command name followed by any arguments which are Amazon and US. And it's telling us that Amazon has been saved or updated. Refresh and those values have been updated. Perfect. What I'd like to talk about now is dealing with the unexpected because when you're working with third party APIs one thing's for sure is that you need to expect the unexpected. So this is okay, but it's all a bit happy path and things could go wrong. We don't know what those things are, 
but I'm not sure that our application is equipped to deal with it. Here's an example. My application is set up to deal with non-200 responses. So it's reasonable to assume that if I was to put something like foobar as a symbol, I would get a status code back which signifies that a resource hasn't been found, so probably something in the 400 range. When my application receives a 200, it's going to handle it gracefully. No unexpected exceptions will be thrown and the command will just exit with a failure status. Let's run the command and test that theory. I'm trying to get property price of non-object Yahoo Finance API client line 44. Let's go and see what's going on there. So here's line 44 of the Yahoo Finance API client and we're hitting this line. We expected that this condition here will be met, but obviously it's not being met. The status code must be 200, so the inside of the if block is getting skipped over. Let's dump out the content and have a look at exactly what we're getting back from this call. So over to the terminal, run it again, and we're getting an empty string. And that should tell you a lot about what you need to know about dealing with third party APIs. So how do we handle this? Should we go and add some error handling to our initial call here? What about this conditional? Do we also need to be checking for empty content? Let's remove this dump here. Here where we're decoding the content, do we also need to add a null call or lesser on the end? Let's go over and look at our refresh stock profile command. And there's got to be at least four lines there which could throw exceptions. But the thing is, we don't know what they are. So if you don't know, don't guess. By throwing in a lot of error handling before we even have a good idea of where the errors might be thrown, one, we're going to create a massive mess, and two, it's all guesswork. When you're dealing with the unknown like we are here, the alternative to guessing is to learn, log and learn. And so that's what we're going to do. I'm going to create a nice wide net by putting a try block before we make the call, and this will wrap around the whole lot. And then I'm going to catch every exception and in my catch block, I'm going to log everything that I think might be useful to me. So you'd have this process running on a pre-prod server before it goes into full production for at least a couple of weeks, pinging that API, getting responses back, learning what kind of errors you're going to get back. And it's with that knowledge that you can make informed decisions on what kind of error handling you're going to need and where you're going to need it, rather than just throwing in try catch blocks here, there and everywhere all over your code. You'll gain confidence in your system when you know what errors you're getting and you know that you've got the right handling in place. With that lecture out of the way, let's add some logging. So I'm going to go up to the constructor and I'm going to inject logger interface, which comes from PSR log logger interface, which is pretty much the standard interface for um, dependency injection and logging. Initialize that as a property, make sure again it goes above the parent call. And then we just need to log something. So this logger, and here we've got a bit of a menu. Error might be okay. Let's go and check this out in the logger interface file. And if you read the doc block for warning, this actually looks more suitable. Example, use of deprecated APIs, poor use of an API, undesirable things are not necessarily wrong. Sounds perfect for us, so we'll change this to warning. And these log methods take a couple of arguments. The first one is a message, which is mandatory. The second one is a context array, which is optional. So I'm just going to do the message. So what I'm passing here is I'm getting the exception class. I'm going to get the exception message file, file number, or sorry, line number. And then I'm also going to pass in the symbol and the region, which are being used to call the API, because I think that will be useful debugging information for us. With that in place, we now need a logger. So what I'm going to do is get monologue. So Symphony Composer require monologue. This will install monologue bundle. As you can see, I've still not updated to Composer 2, so I'm only a few months late. I'll do that this week. When we install monologue, that becomes our default logger. We don't have to do anything else, so we can run the command. And as you can see, it also logs it out to our terminal, which is quite handy. You'll find configuration for all this stuff in config packages. Uh, let's now have a look at the dev log, which has been created. And you're going to need good eyes, but second to bottom here, here is what we just logged. So it's an error exception, and it's saying we're trying to get the price of a non-object. But we don't want all this other stuff because it's just creating noise in our file. So let's go over to our config, and we'll find the dev monologue file. 
and I'm just going to change the level to warning so all this debug uh, messages won't be logged in the file. We'll go and run it again but what I'll do is I'll actually delete this one and we'll create one from fresh and hopefully we'll get something a bit more streamlined. Run the command. Creates our new log file and this is looking much better. So I've got one line and even though it's only one line with this information here I believe I could start debugging. So I've got an error exception saying try to get property price of a non-object in the Yahoo Finance API client on line 44 and we've used the symbol foobar and the region US. And so you analyze your log file and if there's a particular exception in there where you don't believe you've got enough information to debug, then what you can do is catch that particular exception and also log out the backtrace and that will give you more information and you can learn more that way. But to start off with, just log one line like this and see how far that'll take you. After you've run this in pre-prod for two or three weeks, you'll be much more better equipped to handle the errors than if you were just going to try and guess what kind of errors you're going to get up front. And so believe it or not, that concludes these recordings. I only intended to record a single 20 minute video on this stuff, but here we are, six videos and 90 minutes later still having fun. But that's the nature of software, I guess. Everything always takes longer than anticipated and usually costs more as well. But it needn't be the end. If you've enjoyed this test driven approach, let me know about it. There is potential to build this out, possibly with login, user interfaces, maybe some search, background tasks, payments, etc. I welcome your suggestions and feedback. In fact, HTTP client and TDD were both suggestions which I received. So you do have a voice. Make yourself heard in the comments below this video. If you've enjoyed this video, or indeed if you've enjoyed this series, be sure to give it a like. And don't hesitate to share if you want to help others like yourself. That's what good developers do. If you're on YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the little notification icon. I record new material two times a week and details of my schedule can be found on the discussion tab of my YouTube channel homepage.